is up guys EJ here back with another video and today it's gonna be uh, one of my top 10 lists uh, finally finishing off my uh, top 10 films of the 90s series and uh, it's my top 10 films of 1999 which is uh, probably my favorite year of the 90s so I've been really looking forward to doing this uh, list um, yeah 1999 was a great year for film and um, it was the first year I so sort of started really getting into movies um, it was the first year I um, started going to the movies every week, um, which I started halfway through the year, but all these films basically came out the second half of the year. Um, anyway, so that's a good thing, but I saw a lot of them at the theater on the day they came out. So some really cool films and uh, a list I've been looking forward to doing. So uh, count down at number 10 as always, uh, we have Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, Stanley Kubrick's last film, of course. Uh, he passed away, I believe, uh, in the process of uh, completing this movie. I, I'm not sure if he actually died after he finished it. Um, but, yeah, I thought this was uh, a great sort of dark, mysterious thriller um, about love and marriage and uh, infidelity, temptation. I, I guess people just didn't get it or uh, didn't like the fact that it starred Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman at the time uh, when they were married. Uh, but I really liked it. Um, good supporting cast, of course. Uh, Sidney Pollack, and I believe uh, Lily uh, Sobieski was in this as well. Um, even though it's shot in uh, in the UK, it's set in New York. Um, I thought it was a great movie, and um, it's not Kubrick's best, I'd say, but it's still right up there with uh, all his great films. Okay, up next at number nine, uh, we have the talented Mr. Ripley. Uh, directed by uh, the late Anthony Minghella, uh, starring uh, Matt Damon, um, Jude Law, Gwyneth Paltrow, and uh, Kate Blanchett. Of course, uh, Matt Damon gives a fantastic performance as a young guy, young guy who's sent over to uh, Italy uh, to fetch home a uh, sort of a, uh, a young playboy, uh, played by Jude Law. Just a fantastic uh, thriller yet again. Um, one of Matt Damon's best performances. This is definitely one of my favorite performances by him. Uh, it's a rich, beautiful looking film with uh, great characters and a great story and great performances. And um, yeah, just a really good film. Um, absolutely love it. Good supporting cast as well. People like uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, Jack Davenport, James Rebhorn, uh, Philip Baker Hall. Uh, yeah, just talented Mr. Ripley. Just a great film. Okay, number eight, a great ensemble piece, that's for sure, and that is uh, Magnolia, uh, directed, of course, by uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Uh, fantastic film. Um, the opening scenes are so memorable, as is sort of the middle period. Uh, you've got a fantastic cast, an electric performance by uh, Tom Cruise. He was really the standout for me uh, when I saw this, and I wasn't a, really a Tom Cruise fan at the time, um, he's grown on me over the years because I think he's a really sort of underrated actor um, compared to his uh, sort of movie star status. Um, but this is a fantastic performance by him. I thought he should have won Best Supporting Actor uh, that year for this whole uh, great cast. It includes uh, Jeremy Blackman, uh, Melinda Dillon, Philip Baker Hall, Philip Seymour Hoffman again, uh, Ricky Jay, William H. Macy, Alfred Molina, Julianne Moore, uh, John C. Riley. Uh, Jason Robards, you've got the fantastic uh, soundtrack featuring the songs of Amy Mann, uh, Magnolia, definitely one of uh, PTA's uh, great movies and he's made a lot of them. Well he has made a lot but the ones he has made have all been good. Uh, right up there with Boogie Nights and There Will Be Blood. Um, yeah, just a fantastic director and this is a fantastic film. Alright, number uh, seven, uh, we have uh, The Insider. Uh, directed, of course, by Michael Mann. Another great film, sort of real-life setting. Uh, Russell Crowe really good as a uh, former tobacco executive who uh, gets fired and then turns a whistleblower uh, for a, a 60 minute story. Uh, Al Pacino, amazing as the uh, producer of the show. And Christopher Plummer, great as uh, Mike Wallace. Uh, fantastic cast, like a supporting cast again. Philip Baker Hall again. Turns up in a lot of these movies this year. Um, yeah, just a really great film, great performances. Um, big fan of Russell Crowe. 
uh, Uso became a huge star at, was becoming a huge star at this point. Al Pacino, one of his better performances over the past decade or, decade or so, um, not so over the top as as uh, he, he's normally been doing, and uh, Christopher Plummer great as well. Okay, number uh, six, we have uh, The Green Mile, uh, directed of course by Frank Darabont, his uh, follow-up to uh, The Shawshank Redemption, uh, which is one of my all-time favorite films. Again, this film is based on a uh, Stephen King novel, and again, set in a uh, prison setting basically, on uh, death row, um, Tom Hanks, uh, affected by this uh, inmate played by Michael Clark Duncan, while well, he affects the whole uh, whole uh, cell block, basically. Uh, fantastic movie about death row inmates and uh, that kind of thing. Really sort of magical and funny in parts, very funny in parts. Uh, fantastic supporting cast. You got people like uh, James Cromwell, um, who else is in this? Graham Greene, uh, Sam Rockwell, Barry Pepper. Uh, yeah, fantastic film, great performances. Absolutely love this movie, and it's been a while since I've seen it, actually. Um, definitely one I should give a rewatch re soon, uh, but The Green Mile, great movie as well. Okay, number five, a film that for a lot of people defined the year, at least that's the way I took it, um, and that's of course uh, Fight Club, uh, directed by David Fincher, of course starring Ed Norton and Brad Pitt. Um, I've never been able to really describe this film, I sort of always see it as the sort of ultimate uh, guy macho fantasy film. Uh, just a fantastic movie. Um, great visuals. Uh, great cast, of course. Uh, Meatloaf and Helena Bonham Carter as well. Yeah, Fight Club, just a sort of defining film uh, of that year for me. Um, yeah, I just, I've never really been able to sort of describe it properly. Um, but yeah, just a fantastic film. Uh, David Fincher, awesome director, one of my favorites. And this is one of his best. Uh, to be sure. And it says a lot that it's number five on this list uh, because there's four films I thought that were even as good and um, they're all 10 out of 10s, uh, the last six as you'll note in the annotations which I do uh, for these lists. So at number uh, five or four, sorry, we have uh, Three Kings uh, directed by David O. Russell. A uh, fantastic film set at the end of uh, the uh, Iraqi war in the uh, early 90s of course. Um, amid all the uh, sort of partying and celebration uh, for U.S. Marines, uh, go in search of some a uh, some uh, stolen Kuwaiti uh, gold, and they get uh, sort of boiled in this uh, um, Iraqi uprising against the uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, troops and all that kind of aftermath, and uh, it becomes a di dilemma between sort of going for gold and and sort of doing the right thing. The ending of this movie is fantastic. It's just a really brilliant film. Uh, great cast, George Clooney, uh, Mark Wahlberg, Ice Cube, and uh, director Spike Jones, who will be coming up later. Uh, Three Kings, one of the best sort of post-Vietnam War movies, in my opinion. Absolutely love it. And David Owesso has gone on to even uh, bigger and better things of late as well. Okay, number three. Um, yeah, film goes without saying, has to be on this list, and that's American Beauty, uh, winner of five Academy Awards, of course, uh, including Best Picture, uh, Sam Mendes, Best Director, and two fantastic lead performances by uh, Kevin Spacey and Annette Bening, and of course uh, the screenplay, I believe, won uh, won an award as well. Yeah, fantastic film about sort of the idyllic American family and Kevin Spacey having a uh, midlife crisis. Um, really funny, Annette Bening, great. One of my favorite actresses. Uh, Spacey's one of my favorite actors. Always has been. Um, you've got a very sexy Mina Suvari is the sort of Lolita uh, temptress in this film. Uh, Wes Bentley, um, sort of made famous with the uh, the whole camera and the, uh, the, uh, the plastic bag blowing in the wind. Uh, you've got a great performance by um, Chris Cooper, uh, who is one of my favorite, my mom's favorite actors, and she loves him in this film. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention him. Uh, Allison Janney, of course, is in this as well, as is uh, Thora Birch, uh, who plays the daughter 
Um, I'm kind of surprised she didn't really go on to do a lot more than this. I mean, she was really good in Ghost, Ghost World, uh, which I like a lot. Uh, but beyond that, I don't really know her from uh, too many other films. And uh, she, she was a really good, promising young actress. And she really didn't go on to like huge fame after this. But yeah, American Beauty, great film. Just not my favorite of the year. Okay, number two, a film I saw on opening day when it came out, so I knew nothing about it going in, and that's a, um, it's kind of big when you saw this film for the first time. And that, of course, is The Sixth Sense, uh, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Um, yeah, if you didn't know the uh, twist at the end, of course, this film really is really a great film, uh, and it's still a great film even if you do know that, because, of course, I've watched it again since then. But, um, yeah, fantastic sort of ghost thriller uh, starring Bruce Willis, uh, Haley Joel Osment as the young boy who sees dead people, and uh, Tony Collette, uh, really good as the mother. Yeah, just a fantastic sort of slow burn. I mean, that's, that was Shyamalan's style. He really sort of takes his time with the pace, but I sort of love that pace when it comes to these type of films. Say what you want about Shyamalan's recent work. I mean, it hasn't been good at all let's be honest, but his first uh, three films, uh, this, uh, Unbreakable, and Signs are all fantastic movies, and this is my favorite of the three. Um, yeah, still love The Sixth Sense, I think it's a great movie, and one of my favorites of 1999. Okay, number one, last but not least, uh, we have Being John Malkovich. This is my Criterion Collection edition, number 611. Um, of course, uh, directed by Spike Jones, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, fantastic um, script by uh, Charlie Kaufman and just a brilliant film. When I first saw this I hadn't seen anything like it at the time and it sort of just blew me away uh, in its inventiveness and originality of course. John Cusack uh, finds a uh, portal into the, uh, the mind of actor John Malkovich who plays himself uh, to hilarious uh, consequences. You've got a very frizzy and sort of uh, plain looking Cameron Diaz uh, sort of shedding her uh, model uh, persona if you like. Uh, Catherine Keener who I've always liked since this film. This film she was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for and sort of became a, a well-known name after this movie. I've always liked her. Um, she's really good in this. Just a fantastic brilliant film. Uh, any, any film that features a Charlie Kaufman script uh, is interesting. Films like Adaptation and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Um, yeah, Being John Malkovich is my favorite of those three. Um, just a brilliant film and one of my favorites of the 90s. Uh, so there is the list. My uh, top 10 films of 1999, a very special year for me uh, in particular because it was the year I really got into watching movies, sort of hardcore if you like, and uh, 1999 was a great year. So yeah, thank you for uh, watching as always and uh, commenting on these videos. Make sure uh, to send me your list um, of this year as well. I always like checking those out. And um, so what to do next? Um, I'm thinking of doing my uh, top 10 films of the 80s, all, all the years in the 80s, or doing um, doing uh, genres. I might. So if you guys uh, choose between those two, that would be great. Um, somebody requested the 80s. Uh, not too long ago, which I was planning to do anyway, so um, that's probably going to be up next, so uh, look out for that in the uh, future. So until next time, I'll see ya. Bond. James Bond.